Deb Spinster here. Thank you for joining me today for a change. It is a lovely spring day. We've been going from winter to summer. This is, we aren't really getting many spring days this spring. Today I want to play with something that's kind of been on my mind for a while. When I was younger, we had a game, I guess, called Stadium Checkers, and I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember it or ran across it in your childhood to begin with. But it was basically, it looked like a stadium, a sports stadium. So it had large concentric rings and each ring moved around, it was made of plastic, and there were little slots around the ring that were marble size. And you put a marble at the top in one of the slots and then, I don't think I actually played the game, I just played with the marbles. <laughs> As you move the rings around and slots lined up, then the marble would drop down and the, the goal was to get it down to the bottom without the other player messing up your route. Anyway, so I have always remembered that. It, I was a geeky, nerdy kid, I guess, and I just loved that, how that all worked together and meant that you could get the marble down to the bottom. So I've been thinking about doing that and I've been, thinking of it as always being in a good, perfect circle. So I would piece those concentric circles inside each other, which I can do, it's not a problem, but I've been thinking about doing improv curves. So do like quarter circles. And I think what put me in mind of it is one of the quilts that I'm doing now, I think I showed it to you in pieces anyway. And I was doing quarter circles to form half circles and then going with that. But I thought if I did quarter circles as improv, doesn't matter if they line up to be a perfect circle, they're not going to be a perfect circle. And it would just be kind of fun to play with that concept. So just doing quarters and doing gentle curves, improv, and then put four of them together. So that's my plan. As always, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so from my stash, I have pulled some. I did get a new table, which is much more stable, but I'm gonna have to come up, th up with a new camera mount since Pittsburgh Post Office seems unable to spring my, <laughs> my new camera mount. I'll come up with something different. Anyway, so I have pulled some solid colors from my Happy palette. And for those of you who are not as much a fan of solid colors as I am, I've also pulled some prints in my happy palette that we can try. I also, as I was headed downstairs to find something different, I came across this fabric that's my design. We're still wobbling, aren't we? And I thought I could use that too. This is sort of my springier happy, happy palette or my alternative Christmas happy palette. So that those are possibilities too. It depends on how large I wanna make the stadium rings. And then I've also pulled some black and gray solids or near solids and some black and white prints. Uh, white on black this time, I think will be a better contrast than white on black. I also have some bits of white that I might use. You will notice I am not doing black and white stripes. How's that for a challenge for me? Surprise, surprise. So we're going to try to do it without black and white stripes. <laughs> Off camera, I'll play with some black and white stripes. How's that? All right, let's get started. And let's start with some of this, well, let's start with something. This is going to be more toward the middle of the circle or the quarter circle, however you want to look at it. So it can be smaller because it will be going out that way. And because this is, let me think about how this is going to work. Because it's going to be getting wider out here so that the, the um, diameter of the circles are going to get wider out here. You would, if I, and so I need to insert that little slot for the 
um, marbles. So there would need to be a slot here. But of course, if this is straight, then it's not going to conform with the greater diameter moving out. So we would need to do a wedge kind of shape. And I can freehand that absolutely. Ordinarily, if you're doing something that's um, a circle and you need something that uh, is a wedge shape, you would use something like this Dresden plate ruler, which gives you the correct angle to get. This one's probably 12. Yeah, um, 12 of these to make a circle with the seam. So I thought I would try it with um, cutting the wedge out of the circle piece and then moving it up a little more to allow for the seam allowance. We'll, we'll get to that, but that's just kind of where we're headed. So I'm going to start out with cutting just a gentle curve here. And I think I'll do it at the top first. Pardon if it wobbles a little bit here. And then I'm going to cut the next curves based on that. And this curve here does not need to match this one. That's the beauty of improv. So, and I still want this to be a gentle curve. When we put these together into quarters or however many it makes, it may, it may be more than quarters. Maybe we'll need five of them or six of them. I don't know. So now I want to cut a wedge here. And of course it needs to go this way. So in order to have, I could cut it improv wise, but I think I'm going to do this. I'm semi ambidextrous when I'm cutting. <laughs> if you are not used to doing that, don't want to do it, don't feel safe doing it, then you can rotate your mat to do the cuts. So this piece comes out. I might insert it somewhere else. I don't know. And then when I cut the piece to insert in here, if I want to keep that curve perfect, and eventually I will want it to be at least a reasonable curve without jig jags in it, then um, I may have to trim it up. So now the question becomes, what do I want to put in here? I could put in a solid contrasting color. I could put in a different print. Still have a little bit of this wonderful Malka Dabrowska, Dabrowski fabric. I could insert that. I could insert a gray in there, which I think would be kind of an elegant sort of thing. I could insert some black in there, which would also be elegant. Um, I've got different grays. Here's a gray print I could put in there. Not as wild about that. I kind of like that first gray. Grays are so different. You've got warm grays and cool grays and dark and light. That's my favorite so far. Not sure I, how I feel. I thought I was going to really like the white on black, but I'm not sure that's going to be the case. Of course, these are much larger than they'll be. Hmm. So far, I'm liking the gray best. Who knew? The, the black on gray just isn't enough somehow. All right. So it looks like I may be using a piece of this gray. We'll see how it goes. Oh, the other option though, let me think about this, is that I'm going to want narrow circles in between, um, between the, the rings that move. I want some narrow strips in between. Maybe that's what I want to do with the gray. So then I have to figure out what I want to do in between. I can do plain white. 
what I choose here will probably determine what is going to be accented. Is it going to be the rings or is it going to be the marble slots? So I'm going to try it with, did I find a black and white in here that was, all right, let's, oh, how are these going to go together? It all hinges on each other, doesn't it? One of the things that I brought up, one of the prints, I thought might be, if I did it this way, Emily is with me today, by the way, she'll be chattering in the background, is to have this stripe as the slots and have that consistent throughout and then kind of follow this color scheme. I don't really have this green in there. And then how would this gray look with it? Hmm. Let's go, let's still just go with the gray in between and then we'll, or the white in between. <laughs> Indecision, isn't it grand? That just looks blah to me. So I'm going to go with this gray and maybe this will also be the, the narrow arcs in between. All right, now when I am, because I cut this, I have to allow for the seam here and there to get roughly the same as that. So I'm just gonna move this up a ways and cut the um, gray like somewhere around up here, maybe. So rather than jiggle the table around while I do it, I will do that off camera and I'll come back with that piece cut. I was just thinking, putting these together, that this looks kind of art deco-y. It has that wedge that overlaps this rather than fit. That's a thing for another day. <laughs> I'm into art deco right now. Now I can cut this smaller if I want this wedge to be narrower, but I've got seam allowances yet. So I'm going to sew this about here rather than here, because then I won't be able to even up that curve as well as if I had a little bit overhanging both top and bottom. And here we are with the wedge in there. It isn't perfectly, I'm all right with that because I didn't necessarily make that cut right in the center of that curve anyway. So now I can even up this curve and I'm just going to, you know, I freehand the, freehanded the curve to begin with. I can just even it up the same way. It's going to be a perfect arc of the circle, but it wasn't to begin with. So now I have one stadium checker piece, which is probably wider than I need it. And now I want to put a ring here and down here all this is going to be probably the center and I will put something there at the end I want to just keep going out this way and so next up let's do one of these whoo Michael Dabrowski's but in between Am I going to want this gray? It might be kind of interesting to pull this together. Let's try it. So I'm going to do another curve. Emily is looking at this gray and saying to me, you need to press that gray. Give it a quick press anyway. And now I want this is just going to be a narrow strip up here, but I want to make sure that, that's quite a waste, Karen. I want to be sure that I have enough for seams. So now I'm going to just follow this curve here. Let me cut a piece first. 
Now, at home, when you have less confined space, you can probably waste less fabric and just cut just as much as you need out of that. But don't want to be flinging fabric around in your face there. All right, I'm going to, I want this to be potentially a little longer here. So I'm going to put this sort of in the middle and then I'm going to follow this curve and take my time with it. Keep my fingers out of the way. You won't be having a camera to wobble. All right, so this piece then gets held back for another thing because this curve matches here. And if you want to really have a, a good instructor for doing these curves and all of this improv stuff, then um, there's a great teacher, Sheila Frampton Cooper, who does amazing, an amazing class for that. I've learned a lot from her. And now I want a curve that sort of matches this one, kind of, if I want. It doesn't have to be. For my purposes, I think I want it to be reasonably close to it. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lay that curve up there again. I'm just going to kind of follow what's already there. And then there is a piece to sew on there. So I'm just going to flip it back. And that's going to tell me then, just going to kind of follow it back. And start about there. Because I cut the curve this way, I don't want to just randomly put this at the end because then the curve is not going to match up. And I'm just going to go to the machine. This is a very gentle curve. I did that the wrong direction because I want the concave on top. All right, let's try that again. here and then I'm just there are more precise ways to do this but this is going to work for me just kind of follow it back to this edge it's getting away from me and I want the convex on top I probably said concave before but I want the, <laughs> the convex on top I'm going to pin this just to make sure I don't lose track of it on the way to the sewing machine and then I'm going to just lock this down with a couple stitches at the beginning. It will be my third hand with the needle down. And then I'm just going to start to slowly sew this as I bring this over. I'm not yanking it over. I'm not pulling it out to match it. I'm just gently lifting it up and moving it over. And I'm making sure that this is at the edge of the presser foot I'm measuring from the edge of the presser foot or wherever your marker is at the point where the needle is entering the fabric. Not at the front of the presser foot or your marker, but where the needle is because that's where you need it to be that quarter inch. You'll, you'll get to this eventually, but... And then I'm just going to keep easing it around until I get to the end. So I have stitched that with a scant quarter inch seam. I used the needle down on my machine and when I stop, when it's in the needle down mode, then it lifts the presser foot a little bit so I can adjust things. If you do not have that feature on your machine or a needle down, then just use the, the hand crank to put the needle down in the fabric and then turn a little bit as you need to. And remember with these curves, you've got a whole lot of bias going on. So make sure that you are just sort of lifting this over to meet the edges, not that you're tugging on it or even pulling this way because then you're going to stretch the bias and it's not going to fit. In both these cases, by the way, I have pressed toward the dark gray. So now I'm ready to put another curve up here. And we thought we might do this Malka, right? Malka, I say it like I know her. Like we're old friends. I feel like we are because I just love this fabric. Now, I want to cut this curve the same. And remember, this is the piece I'm going to end up with 
when I first started doing this, I was, I'm cutting this as if this is going to be the piece I use, but it's not. So down here, you need to cover only <laughs> as much as you need to have that curve complete up here. So what I'm thinking is I may want this curve even narrower. So I'm going to give this a little extra leeway and then I'm going to cut both layers at once. And I'm going to be very careful of my fingers. I'm going to go slowly and make sure my fingers are out of the way. If you're not very comfortable doing that, then you can um, use a glove, a Kevlar glove. All right, so I just want to trim this down because I want this strip to be narrower. Pardon my elbow coming into your face there. And so now, if my cutting skills are bad or I need a new blade, it could be either or both. Now this curve is not, you can see it's narrower here and a little wider at the top. I'm okay with that. If you don't like that, then you could go back in and trim that a little bit more. I find for me anyway, if I go back and start trimming things, then it, it just, oh, that didn't look right. Now I got to trim this a little bit. And so it ends up not being so good. All right. So I'm going to, again, I want the convex on top. So I'm going to start here and again, just gently be moving that over with needle down. All of you smart people out there were probably calling out to me, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. She's going to do it. I need, <laughs> I need to cut the piece for the slot first. So I I'm going to do it to the side. I don't want these to match up. They don't have to be way far apart, but because I'm I'm working with such a narrow bit here, I'm learning that this should have been narrower, but we're gonna work with it, see where it takes us. So I'm going to do the next slice about here. And of course I didn't mark exactly where I cut this on the wedge ruler. So the next one is not going to be the same. I might trim it down to be a little narrower anyway. This is a practice piece. If I were going to do, um, say a finished piece, I would make this narrower. And I could go back, of course, and take this back and make that narrower. But, which in fact, do I want to do that? No, we're just gonna leave it. This is improv. And now I'm going to cut a wedge from here. Now, I want this wedge to, I don't want to cut it like this because we're, we're moving outward. So it has to be at this angle. So, and I'm going to lose some to seam. So let's make this narrower and Oh my, I have some no move dots on there. So I want the center of this wedge, the center line to be, um, how do I want to say this? My geometry fails me. So it's going to be keeping with a, a radial line coming out from the center. So, or roughly. But I think you can see that that clearly is not what, that's not what I'm looking for, it's clear to me. So I'm going to do a narrower one and see how a narrow one works. And I'm going to do it about there. And so now I have a wedge piece. I could do a positive negative thing. Oh, that would be kind of interesting, couldn't I? Wouldn't it? Um, I could, um, do a, another, every other quarter, I could do the opposite so that these pieces would be the gray, the circles, and then the slots and the spaces in between could be 
these fabrics. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> and, nope. Got to get the curves right here. This, I want to make sure I've got the, I'm putting the right piece in. That isn't right. There we go. <laughs> All right. So when I cut the gray piece, then it's going to go in there. So I'm going to leave this here so that I'm sure I remember how this goes. And then I will cut a gray piece. This piece I could use for another circle. So I'm not going to cut it from that. If I have any scraps here, nope, looks like I'm doing another piece. So again, I will use this wedge to cut another piece. It will be like this long so that I've got some overlap that allows me to trim this curve here. And then when I go to cut this curve at the top, I'll have enough to curve it as I want it to go. Now you'll notice that this does match does not match up here because we um, cut this without seam allowances in mind, that means that not all of the edges are going to match up. So I wanted this curve to be as close to right as it could be. So these two pieces here, um, those two sides, let me get a little closer here. These two match up pretty well, and that's by design. When I flipped it over to sew it, I wanted those to match up because I haven't cut this curve yet. Um, this, they'll be able to still be roughly that same curve. So now I'm just going to even up this curve, and now <laughs> I can sew it to the other piece. I'm almost thinking... I want that gray strip to be narrower. How sad is this? All right, let's see about, and I'm, I'm remembering I still have a seam allowance to do. Another quarter inch here is about there. I think that's good. So I'm going to trim this according to that curve. get pretty narrow down there but that's all right too actually so I'm going to so I do that follow this curve watching my fingers always always pardon my hand I did that poorly for you and I'm going to add that on. I don't know how stadium checkery it's going to look, but it's kind of an interesting concept. All right. I want the convex on top while I'm sewing. So that's going to be here. And I'll just do my usual curve thing. And now I have that gray piece sliced in here and it did run out here at the edge. I'm not worried about that. I don't mind it being like that to begin with. And this is probably gonna be going something like this out that way anyway. So then the next step is to do a curve here with some more gray and I don't think that's going to be wide enough gray at this point so I may need to get another piece but it will be another curve and then there'll be another fabric up here with a slice in it maybe over on this side so I could be thinking about how I is going to be a right angle eventually. So this is going to be a fairly small block because I'm running myself off edges here. 
Um, so I want a, a longer piece out here so that I can keep cutting this way. And of course I can add strips in down here as well as I'm coming toward the center of the block. So I can make this the center, but this is really pretty wide for what's in my head anyway. So I would probably do another curve here and one up here. So I am going to do another gray insert here. You don't have to watch me do that. And then we'll come back and think about one more strip of fabric up here. Don't know what that will be, but we'll find something. So I'll be back once I have this gray insert in. All right, this is pieced in now, and it's going to be pretty narrow because I haven't left much there, but I'm okay with that. So now I have to decide what fabric is going up here next. And I have this one, which keeps it sort of in this um, yellow-green sort of mode, or we could spice it up a little with, say, a pink. Or we have, and these are solids, I'm aware, but we could do a blue with, or here we have a print blue. Which adds in a cool color. Um, I've got a hot pink in one of my fabrics. It's just kind of overwhelming with all that pink right there, isn't it? Pink in. I do not have a teal fabric in that collection. Although I do have one in, do I have any fabric left of that? Hmm, decisions, decisions. Like the blue over the pink. I don't know, I like both colors. This almost looks, might be the camera. I should look at it, not through the camera. It's strange to say, but that almost looks too dull next to this. This is, is pretty light actually, but that doesn't bother me as much as that blue does. Or does it? Maybe part of the problem, and it's a little bit down here, is that this is very linear, bi-directional, I guess, and I'm not sure that's going to work the way I want it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this, give that a try, and then do another arc in this pink. Just a little note here, I often find it easier to cut this curve first um, just by itself and then I don't have to be fighting two pieces of fabric and trying to get them rearranged till I get the curve the way I want it. And then I will put the curve down and cut this piece separately. See there's still a couple of spots I want to fix here. As I'm looking at this, I've got another idea, and this might be a series that goes along with the villages, which I will finish, but this is bridges. Doesn't this look like a bridge? Like a curved bridge going over a creek? That could be kind of fun to work on, couldn't it? Especially if this were like blue, 
you could do covered bridges that that'll be fun anyway i'm <laughs> i'm going back to the stadium now so i've got these two curves just so i could sort of see where this is going and now i need to before i sew this on <laughs> i need to splice in some gray there so i will do that and i'm going to make it another narrow one like this although it would and they aren't going to be the exact same size anyway but it might be kind of fun just to do varying ones it won't be the stadium checkers which has consistent width of those but stadium checkers is just a starting point for inspiration so i will do another one that might be maybe in between these two let's see how it turns out and I'll put it maybe about here. And again, I want the center line here to be radial and sort of perpendicular to that point on the outer edge of the circle, such as we have it so far. It doesn't have to be perfect. We are not making this geometrically perfect, mathematically perfect quilt. Apologies to my mathematically inclined family and friends. And I'm keeping these wedge pieces because I might just do the negative of this, opposite of that, whatever you want to call it. So I'm hanging on to those. And now I will get myself a wedge of gray and that in there oh I just thought of something this wedge you could do lettuce or cabbage wedges and then you could do different greens and different ooh, that'd be fun all right never mind lots of light lettuce -y color greens lettuce and celery color greens and then sort of a creamy in between for it ooh. That could be fun too Yes, that is my hyperlinked brain going crazy. All right, I'm going to do this wedge and then I'll be back. I promise. No more ideas. And now this is ready to sew onto this. And then I think I'm going to trim it into roughly what I uh, need to do something down here before I do that. But I'll put this on and then maybe we'll call it a... Hmm. Will we call it a day? Or do I want to finish a quarter today? Here is Karen, easily distracted. Cool, warm, warm, cool. Do I want cool down here? is a narrower piece. Hmm. Or do I want some more pink down there to tie it together? Or is that too much pink? Got this unruly. Hound's tooth. I may have to go down and do a little more looking in my stash. There's another Malka that's that orange. That's going to be too much orange. Hmm. I think this is going to require a little more stashing, <laughs> which I don't want to do today day yet. So I'm going to sew this on and come back and then we'll talk about where we're going from here. And maybe we will do a little trimming just to see where we're going to end up. All right. So I want convex on the top. I'm going to flip that over and here we are at this point. And I'm just thinking about uh, 
that's about the center point of this. We're going to just miss it there, so I'm doing my quarter, quarter circle here. Then Trying to work this around too. And this I could trim down a little narrower or have the seam there so that goes around there. So it's going to look like that. Except we're going to start to lose that in the seam, aren't we? Maybe I don't want to do quarter circle at all. Maybe I just want to do a funky curve. I don't know, but I am going to cut this side just because it helps me to keep in mind. Got one crumb in there, two crumbs in there how this is going to look in the end. And then just have the wedge keep going. We're just playing, right? Right? Oh, look at these lovely little mini crumbs I'm getting. So that is less than a perfect wedge. It would like to be more like this, I think. But for now, it's pretty good. This is going to be narrower. That's just too much going on there for me. Well, it might even be something like that in the end. So in stadium checkers, but it's like that. I don't know. What do you think? Today's question, what do you think? This I think I'll want to be narrower even than just a seam would give me. So I'm gonna trim off just a little bit of that. This is probably going to bug me that it isn't. Now I'm going to do this and it'll make it feel better, sort of. <laughs> or I'll just turn this puppy down to what I want it to be. Maybe not that narrow, but. Okay, this is the print. I think it's kind of throwing me off here, but this is going here and this is going that way and not sure. And then how will this look with another piece of gray up here, sort of. I think that will help it give the eye some place to stop. I don't know. I think that's going to be. I don't know a lot. You may have noticed. I think that might be it for today. <laughs> okay, if we set that on top, and that gives us a finishing point at both top and bottom. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder what it would be like if we did a white strip, top and bottom. I'm not even going to ask about a black and white stripe, which would have to be the correct angle for it to 
Yeah, it wouldn't look right anyway, so we won't even contemplate it. All right, that is going to be it for today, I think. That's our basic concept. I need to ponder a little while and think about some other fabrics. And next time, maybe we will visit some solid colors. And maybe even, here's a thought. I said no more ideas, but here we go. If we did these pieces in the white on black, then did these grays in the black on white, and then the wedges could be bright fabrics. Oh, I'm liking that. I'm liking that idea. Maybe we'll do that next week. Nothing wrong with this. Kind of like it. It's an awful lot of prints going on for me, but it's a starting place. All right, I'm done. I'm finished. That's it for today. Thank you all for joining me. It's been fun and a good learning experience. If you want some more with curve things like this, then um, I can suggest a couple of people. One is Cindy Grisdella, G-R-I-S-D-E-L-A, and she has some good books out. I believe she's also doing in-person classes again, but her books are very good. And then um, for a teacher, Sheila Frampton Cooper, she um, she does really art quilts. Um, how do I want to say that? To me, they look like a, a beautiful fine art piece. Not that Cindy's aren't wonderful. Um, Sheila's are sort of freeform organic, and she is very good at teaching about curves and how to do them and how to incorporate all these pieces together. So. Um, Cindy Grisdella and or Sheila Frampton Cooper. I, as far as I know, Sheila doesn't have a book out, at least yet. Um, she did, I took one of her Zoom classes during COVID and, and she's really amazing and does amazing work. And her students come up with beautiful things after they take her classes. So I can recommend either of those, especially for this type of work. I hope to see you next week. In the meantime, be well, be safe, be happy, be quilting. Mm -hmm.